wasn't the Super Bowl that anybody wanted, but here we are. It's the one we got. It's the one we got. Welcome back, everyone, to the Coconut Curry Podcast. If you're new around here, we are three college students at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm Justin. We got Raj and Peter here as well. Um, and we're on all platforms, YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Uh, if you're new around here, we just chat sports, hopefully offer a new perspective on things. Like we said, we're college students. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. We're almost at 100 subscribers. Wow. 67. Um, Big which, milestone. We, we finally found a little bit of a... Way YouTube's in the system. About, YouTube's and, about to send us the stone tablet play button. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the it, like carved wood. <laughs> yeah. um, so we appreciate you all subscribing. If you are this is your first video as a subscriber, keep tuning in. And like I said, like videos it helps out a lot. And we got nearly 200 vi- views on our last uh, clip, which yeah, is set an all time record. So we appreciate everyone checking that out. Um, we had two people here predict the Lions to go to the Super Bowl, which aged super poorly, but they it were, looked good for about were, 30 minutes. It looked. Yeah. CJ Grinder Johnson just didn't wave. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. Um, but yeah, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. And as always, we start the podcast off by reacting to comments um, on their Instagram, our <laughs> I, shorts, I would just and everything. Like, to like say something to all the 49ers fans I reached. I never said your team was bad. <laughs> Half the comments are just like, go 49ers, you suck. I never said anything about your team being bad. I just said, I want to see a different team in the Super Bowl. And for some reason, it reached every 49ers fan on the you goddamn place. Chiefs fan. Chiefs. Same thing. You know what? Honestly, same, same thing. Same, yeah. Like, <laughs> I could say the same thing about the Niners. Same, same audience. But still, yeah. Chiefs fans, I never called your team bad. I just didn't want to see you guys in another Super Bowl because I like variety when I watch sports sometimes. <laughs> It's yeah. good to see a different team win. Yeah, so if you didn't see the clip, Raj, uh, Raj had said that you just wanted to see a different matchup and not see the Chiefs. And Chiefs Kingdom came out in full force, sending gifts yeah. and yeah. Uh, saying that, like, well, you're going to have to deal with it. If you ain't us, like, if you're not us, then, like, I don't know, get on board or whatever. They hate and us then they ain't us. my favorite was so when someone said, quote, you sound gay. <laughs> that, um, was that was an all timer. That was an all timer. I don't know what I mean. Well, I don't I, even know what that means. I don't know I what I don't okay. know what that means, but. <laughs> And then um, one of my favorites was, quote, I wonder if you said that about the Patriots. Oh, hell so, yeah. So let's let's break let's this down. Really clear. <laughs> Raj and I are Eagles fans. So, we, yeah, we were in the Super Bowl in 2018 when the entire country was rooting for the Eagles. One of the most hated fan bases in America. One of the most hated dynasties yes, ever. Because everyone was rooting for us because everyone didn't want to see the Patriots get their sixth ring or yeah. whatever that was going to be at the time. And so the idea that, like, I wonder if you said this about the Patriots, the entire country was saying this about the Patriots besides the folks in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and, like, Rhode Island. I am a Giants fan. We have beef as opposing fan bases. I was rooting for the Eagles, all right? I was rooting for the Giants when they played the Patriots. Every No one wanted no the Patriots. No one likes the dynasty. That's the point. But... We'll get into it later. Yeah, but it's, it so, ends up being good for sports. Yeah, so sport. I love, I just love the like. Yes, what we you did say this about the Patriots. It's like everybody said this about the Patriots. It's like the Chiefs are way more likable, in my opinion. Oh than my the Patriots. god, yeah, they are way more likable. Than They've the got like personalities, and they yeah, like play yeah, a little yeah. bit more like loose. The Patriots are like a, oh yeah, we're gonna be super defensively like stout yeah, it's just and like boring games yeah. to watch. That it's like you know they win the Super Bowl thirteen three. It's like yep. why am I watching <laughs> cool. this? Also, Chiefs fans. I respect the ones of you who know who Alex Smith is and actually commented and recognized the Chiefs were not good about 15 years ago or 10 years ago. I respect you guys for holding it out and being loyal Chiefs fans. And all the Chiefs fans (laughs) who kept commenting, I guarantee you cannot name who the QB was or the running back you guys had before Isaiah Pacheco and Patrick Mahomes. You can't even name any of your receivers before Tyreek Hill. Did they have Jamal Jamal Charles at one point? Yeah. Yeah. That was that was that was their Pro Bowl running back who carried their team for years. And I respect the one guy who commented. He's just like, let me have this. We had a Pro Bowl running back and we were still ass. Yeah. I respect that. You know what? Those are the fans I respect. The ones who can understand they were bad and now they're good and they're living in the moment, saving it. Not the ones who comment the stupid gifts and say, like, Durka Durka. Yeah. There was the one homie that said that that deleted it immediately. Yeah. I was like, oh wait, <laughs> I was about to, I was about to go <laughs> that crazy at him. But, off yeah. on. <laughs> um, and then one of my also favorites was, and I'm going to just quote this quote: "Lamar and the Ravens have shown time and time again that no matter what people have to say, the Ravens are destroying teams. The Chiefs, spelled incorrectly, will be no different." <laughs> Number one, learn how to spell Chiefs. Like if you're going to like talk football, it's C H I E F S. I think. Um, I think. Um, they also have to learn how to spell matter. Yep. Well, yep. 
But I, I can say that's like the Y and the T are next to each other on the keyboard. I can get rid of that. The I and the E, like you're just messing that yeah, up. So you guys I are better. I before E except after C, except there's a shitload of exceptions. Yep. <laughs> and number two, <laughs> Lamar and the Ravens have shown time and time again that no matter what people say, the Ravens are destroying teams. In the regular season, yeah, yeah. this year, yeah, not in the past, yeah. past Super Bowls, they've choked in the playoffs for the last three, four years. Lamar and indeed. they did blow out teams in the regular season this year. So they were not time and time again, just this year. They showed that they could destroy teams, which was impressive, but never besides also, that. They weren't really destroying teams. No, they won a lot of big, they, big they, games. Well, they won a lot of big games, but then they, they also like let the Steelers yep. back into multiple games. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? And then the Rams game oh, went to overtime. Beat them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Kenny Pickett is 1-0 and against with, Lamar Jackson. Matt Canada at, has the OC has still. The OC. <laughs> I don't know. Fourth quarter, Kenny Pickett's just a different breed. Different breed. Yeah, so we always like to start the episode off by reacting to comments. You know, also, it's always fun. Please keep beefing in the comments. Yeah, it's I really love funny. it. Absolutely. It, it's, it's like, again, there are the comments, like, there are lines that you don't cross, but like, keep them hilarious. Like, it's, it's funny. so funny. Like, just keep beefing with us, the other people in the comments. It's funny. It helps boost engagement. Like, just keep going at it. I love waking up to some of these comments. They <laughs> yeah, just make me laugh. They are really funny. <laughs> I just love when people bring in things that like don't matter to I the love, conversation yeah, when they just bring the most irrelevant things like i love this like <laughs> were you, even the were you saying about this to the patriots like we didn't talk about the patriots <laughs> at all in that clap like, <laughs> or we it just was rushed yeah, <laughs> i think sometimes too the people who watch the clips don't watch the actual episodes which makes sense it's on yeah, social yeah, yeah. media but they'll be like to get this person off the pod it's like there's three people on the podcast like we all like yeah i clipped the episode the clip with yeah, other people like it's so everyone funny. looked at this everyone post like we posted this yeah, or right it's time to drop like okay, this, get, the the, this guy up. shouldn't be this guy shouldn't have a podcast it's like no three of us have a podcast yeah no my my favorite <laughs> ones are like it's the ones where it's like this dude has the worst takes and it's like obviously just a clip that's out there for clickbait one to get engagement one person <laughs> said one person said that i had horrible takes and like they looked back at all of our clips which yeah appreciate the views um <laughs> and they were like all your takes are horrible <laughs> I predicted the Super Bowl before. Like this was the exact Super Bowl matchup I predicted when I made the predictions three weeks ago. Literally, yeah. and it happened. Yeah. And they're like, "Your takes are horrible." Like, yeah, did I get some games wrong? Sure. Did the result, <laughs> yeah. the final result, end up the way oh, it was? Sure. God. You did too. You yeah. also picked the Chiefs and the 49ers yeah. to be I in was the... delusional, and I thought the Bills were finally going to do it. Yeah, that was that's on you. But but um, I still got the Niners. Did I? No. Wait, did I say the <laughs> you, Lions? You said Lions, yeah. Oh, oh, that boy. makes sense. Hey, it looked pretty good for a little bit. It did. And but we'll get into that in a little bit. Bye bye. But anyway. Keep commenting. It's great for content. It's um, we appreciate it to you. And then, of course, if you're new here, this is our favorite segment Disgruntled Moment of the Week. We talk about either ourselves or other people that we think are dissatisfied or angry, hence the word disgruntled. And then. I'm going to let Peter start because he went yes. last, last last week. Peter, what is your disgruntled well, moment so, of the week? So, you know, I started this off thinking I was going to go on a rant about how stupid boomers are. But the more I was thinking about it, I kind of literally thought about it right in this moment. My disgruntled moment of the week is for CJ Gardner-Johnson. What are you doing waving at the 49ers fans at halftime? This is the first time in like 60 years that the Lions have been good, that they've won playoff games. This is insane. And you decide to smite the playoff gods and say, oh, I'm going to be an asshole. I'm going to start waving to fans at halftime because you have, what, a 21-point lead? Something like that. No, it wasn't even 20. 17, 17, I think, yeah. Yeah, it was a 17-point lead at half. It was 24-7. You had one half to make it to the Super Bowl. One. But you decided that your ego and you being an asshole was more important than letting the team win. But no, you smited all of Detroit in that one moment. Detroit can blame you for that loss, not anybody else on the team. I know Dan Campbell did, made some awful decisions. Yes, sir, We're Dan Campbell. You. We are blaming you, CJ Gardner Johnson, because if you just didn't wave at the fans at halftime, the playoff gods would be fine. Show and they wouldn't have been mad, and we would have had Detroit the Super Bowl, and I would have been right. <laughs> God, show us in Philly, dude. I hundred percent agree. Like, I don't understand how players time in, and some of the some of it's like their edge they have and whatnot, yeah. and that helps them on the dude, field. But just you don't need to wave. Don't wave before, at the fans. before the half, and also with a, such a cursed team in the Lions, the 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 play the gods were waiting to smite them, and you had every reason just to go into half like calm, come out and kick ass again, and just like 
kind of game managed sort of what the Chiefs did in the second half, and they just they didn't. So I think that's a great disgruntled moment of the week. Uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, welcome to the podcast. It's the first time we've really mentioned him this year because yeah. he left the Eagles. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Raj, actually, should I go first or should you go first? I think you need to explain yourself. Okay. You can go so, first and explain. If you're returning from last week, which probably many of you aren't, um, but if you would like to go check that out, last week we made a squad ride, which is where all of our friends put in one leg of a parlay, and we watched the game and see it happen. And we were nearly close to cashing a really big paycheck. We're all going to Nashville. We were excited yeah. to have some extra spending money and everything. So, you know, we were really close that we were going to do it again. So I made, we had, some people had eight, some people had 10, but I had a 10 leg parlay, um, squad ride again and everything hit and i'll just read off what all hit in this parlay it was plus 2307 which means a hundred dollars wins two thousand three. so for last week they didn't hit the parlay yeah. this week tried to do it again tried to do it again and i did not bet a hundred dollars don't worry that's not but that's how the odds work here's what we bet brock purdy 225 jameer gibbs 40 rushing yards christian mccaffrey 70 rushing yards debo 40 receiving yards jameer gibbs touchdown scorer christian mccaffrey touchdown score george kittle three plus receptions sam laporta 40 yards jabison williams one reception and amara st brown five receptions so you may have seen me smirk at george kittle three receptions if you're watching on video because that was the only thing that did not hit <laughs> he had two. and that was also <laughs> one of the things that was most likely to hit out of everything we bet it was like minus 590 he's the best tight end on the team he's their, probably their second best pass catcher on the team in a big game, kind of like a security blanket for Brock Purdy, and he caught two passes the entire game. And everybody who bet, and this is why I'm disgruntled, is because that was my leg that I put in. I put in two legs of the squad ride, the Brock Purdy and the George Kittle. If we just don't bet George Kittle and I make a safer pick, everybody's walking home with an extra like $100, $200 in their pocket. And you can see Raj if you're on video, and you can see that he's really, really mad. So I'm going to drop the mic and hand it over to Raj. I'm, <laughs> I've already gotten a lot of backlash. I've retired from the squad ride for the rest of the season. But Raj, you're I'll give it over it to you. Super Bowl. Don't deny it. Oh, boy. Here we go. You might want to turn him down. So here we are. I'm on my way back from Costco because I was going to make food. And I see that we're making our squad ride for the first game. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, this is pretty solid. I'll, I'll tail. So I'm adding everything. And then Justin. By the way, this is the first squad ride was not the one I just said. Don't worry. There's multiple times Justin has let us all down. <laughs> so we're on our way. I'm on my way back. And I'm I'm putting the bets in and onto my phone while I'm at a red light. And Justin sends a text. Buddy, you just. <laughs> Don't text to <laughs> drive. I, was at, I said at a red light. It, That's okay. <laughs> Everyone does it. Let's be real. <laughs> Whatever. You can't arrest me for it. Anyways. You're the worst. <laughs> anyways. So I'm putting everything in. And Justin decides to send a text. I kind of like the Mahomes over 25 rush yards. So I'm like, you know what? Might as well add it. You know. It's a oh, squad. my God. It's a squad. I forgot about this. It's a squad ride. So I'm like, you know what? I got to do it because it's for the squad ride. So I add it. And my our other friends did not put that leg in because they already made their bet before Justin sent that. So. I'm sitting there with Justin, and I had the Mahomes leg also in my parlay. Flash forward to towards the end of the game. Two of my friends are sitting there cheering because their parlay has hit. I'm sitting there shaking my head in disappointment and looking at Justin because he cost me that parlay by making that by have saying that leg in the squad ride. It makes you feel better. I cost myself too. No, no, no. That's How much okay. money would you have made on the uh, the parlay? That was probably going to be like 35, 35 off of a $5 40. bet. But then were you going to put that money yeah. then on the uh -huh. next parlay uh -huh. to uh -huh. make an even bigger payout? Yep. Okay. So, yeah. I and real quick, the reason that parlay doesn't hit is because the Chiefs get a egregious holding call called on them. Yeah. And, and, so, and so, like, not that, that, not that it excuses my end of the bet thing. <laughs> That's football. But it just adds, like, insult to but injury. You got it. He, Patrick Mahomes physically ran the necessary yards. And everyone thinks that was a holding call was way too soft to be called. And if he just doesn't get the holding call there, it cashes. But yes, Raj, go ahead. But yeah, so that doesn't cash. And Justin has let me down once that day. And then you, I would, then we're making our next squad ride. You know, 
the George Kittle. This leg. is the big one too. This is this like is the big one, and that was, a, that was a small introductory squad ride, and this was like the big show. Yeah, yeah. avenging last week. And now I had two parlays. I'm not as mad about the second one because Josh Reynolds can't catch a football to save his life. It's okay, <laughs> whatever. But the one where I put five dollars down to make about around one eighty something like that. I forget what it was. Yeah, because I was like I was like two hundred. Yeah, because I bet a couple more things. So something yeah, you're like probably around one eighty something like that. So I make the bet. Every single leg hits besides the George Kittle one. And there I am sitting there like an idiot because once again, Justin's leg has screwed my lay over again. Is that three times now? Three, th- no, twice for me, I would three say, times for the squad I would ride. say two and a half because okay. the first squad ride we had last week that we talked about didn't hit because James Cook didn't get four receiving yards and Patrick Mahomes didn't get 10 passing yards. I was the Patrick Mahomes, but the James Cook would have also, also needed to hit. Yeah, okay. And we, so two and a half. Times, and we assume yeah. that if James Cook had caught a ball, it would have been closer to field goal range. Patrick Mahomes probably gets the ball back. So like that was a collective effort fail there. Um, this was completely on me. I was the only leg that didn't hit twice. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. The yep. fr- yeah. But uh-huh. that, that was only related to you and me the yeah. first time. The squad the, ride. All the boys lost. Yeah. That was based gross. on my mistake. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. It's it's on me. I've hand up. Got to be better. Got to be better. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so what are we cooking for the Super Bowl? All I know is that yeah. I am not oh, the squad ride. Yeah, what are we? Kidding? There no is idea. no squad ride for me in the Super Bowl. I, no, no, Justin can participate in the squad ride. I he just, just can't. Get I'm not. Say. I'm not cursing. I he put doesn't out, get a say. Oh, put, so he can't put in a leg, but he can bet it. Yeah, you. yeah. Okay. So yeah. I put a put out a statement into our group chat <laughs> and said, "I, Justin H. Curtis, will not be bet not be participating in any more squad rides for the rest of the year until next football season because I'm cursed and I've Bless. I've." Truthfully, I've hurt the boys more than helped them at this point. <laughs> uh-huh. And I need to take a step back, you know, do some inner work, reflect on myself, and come back stronger next year. And You're you gonna be an and you know what's degenerate. crazy? My leg was the one that was said that would be a risky leg. Wasn't it the, the Jameer it was the Jameer Gibbs, Gibbs anytime? anytime. Yeah. It hit in the first or second quarter. Yeah, yeah but any times are tough because like Except for Christian McCaffrey. I've been two yeah. for two. I told them for the Last week when they had the squad ride, I sat there and said, trust me, Khalil Shakir, anytime touchdown. Yeah, touch but the way, the way squad ride works, and this is just for mm-hmm. anybody even listening, is like you usually bet things that are more likely than not to happen because if you just bet really unlikely things during the game, your payout would be huge, but it's unlikely it's going to hit. So things like Brock Purdy 225, that was minus 400 likely to hit. Jameer Gibbs 40 rushing was minus 200 likely to hit and things like that. When you get into the anytime touchdown scores, Jameer Gibbs was like minus 120 to hit the anytime, which is, that means it's like probably 55, 45% yeah. chance to hit, which just increases your odds a lot. Um, and as we mentioned, George Kittle, three receptions was like one of the most free. I kind of added it in there as an extra little boost of cash that we could get paid out and clearly didn't work out. So good Lord, that Jameson two time would have, that Jameson Williams two time touchdown would have fed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Crazy. Oh but my God, that's disgruntled moment of the week. I think our favorite segment, um, but now let's talk some football. Um, first game of the weekend, Chiefs defeat the Ravens 17-10. to 10. The Chief, Chiefs advanced their fourth Super Bowl in six years, Jeez. fourth in the last five years. Um, Chiefs scored 17 points in the first half. That's all the points they scored the rest of the game. Mahomes, 30-39, 241, a touchdown. Lamar, 20-37, 272, a touchdown, an interception, and a fumble. Guys, what are our takes? Good job, Zay Flowers. <laughs> Good job. This game, this game was, you know, one, you not fumbling the ball away from being tied. Because honestly, the Ravens defense played their hearts out that second half. They were re- they, they played their hearts out the entire game. Yeah. Like, I mean, you're, you held Patrick Mahomes to 17. Yeah. That's on your offense. And that I mean, point. that first yeah. touchdown was that the, the was pass there was the yeah. one on one with Kyle Hamilton yeah. and Travis Kelsey. Like that was insane. Kyle Hamilton had the like perfect coverage. Like there was almost nothing else he could have mm-hmm. done. And that's just Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes turning on playoff mode and being literally the best duo we've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. and that's playoffs. not really arguable. Yeah, Travis is only lacking Jerry Rice receiving yards. He's got that's more true. receptions, more touchdowns, and everything. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, offense. I don't know what happened to the Ravens' offense. Remember last week when I said if the Chiefs can't stop the Ravens' run, <laughs> yeah. the Ravens are going to steamroll them. The Chiefs didn't need to stop the run; they just didn't run the. Ball. I think they ran it six times, I think. Five or six times. Yeah. And I'm just sitting, I'm like befuddled. Like you have Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, you have Lamar, and Lamar's rushes were just. Don't say Justice Hill is like a pro bowler, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying you have these running backs yeah. who can just, you know, explode at some point. I don't know. But still, like 
you shut you shut down your own run game for what to favor the pass game to send OBJ's who is washed as fuck right now on a forty yard fade. Yeah, that he couldn't even catch up. What to. was the point of that? So yeah, I don't know who was call- whoever was calling the Ravens offense. I hope you snorted a line of crack before you decided <laughs> to call that game because you shut down your own run game, which is what your offense was built around. Yeah, I I think th- I think that. I think the Ravens kind of got in their own head about everything because a, it was very obvious that they were trying to have Lamar win this game through his arm, not through his legs. I don't know if they told him not to run or something before the game, <laughs> but um, for anybody wondering, he just moved a can of Fanta off the table. <laughs> they were just shaking. Not, <laughs> just shaking. not sponsored. Okay. Not sponsored. Please sponsor. Us. Yeah. I was going to say, wish we were sponsored, <laughs> but yeah, clearly something had to have happened where they told Lamar not to run because he did it. He really didn't scramble that much. And that is such an integral part of that offense where you need to like you need to have a linebacker playing in zone and spying that quarterback because you need to like be ready for Lamar Jackson to scramble. And every time that he scrambled, it he didn't take off like he usually does which part of it is to make sure he doesn't get hurt which totally valid like where he's kind of like going down a little bit early not trying to do that valid you're trying to worry about your career but you're kind of in the afc championship i was gonna say if there's a spot that you get injured running for a big yardage it's like we saw brock purdy make some really aggressive runs and that brock purdy looked better on his legs than lamar jackson yeah and i think it was because for lamar he didn't like that didn't look like part of the game plan where brock purdy was willing to take that step and say hey i'm gonna go like, off look, script yeah it looked like lamar was kind of like oh i don't want to do this because what for whatever reason yeah injury because he thought he needed to do it with the air um i was gonna say i think what happened to the ravens offense is what happened to the bills decision making in that game was where they were like we're not going to be able to stop kansas city on offense because we know if they're down they're going to come back and score so we need to go score touchdowns every drive, and we need to make big plays. And I, I think see. they get away from the run game. This has happened in the Bills game where they were pl- throwing everything behind the line of scrimmage. They were they went for a fake punt when they really deep in their zone that they didn't need to do. Um, and this happens. I think it happened to the Ravens too, where they stopped running the ball. Like, oh, we need to get the big play. I think they got a little bit like enamored with the Zay Flowers big touchdown in the beginning of the game. That was kind of just an awkward, like blown coverage. Um, yeah. They had the Lamar Jackson fourth and two, 21 yard run, which was like the biggest run of the game for him. Yeah. And then they had the Zay Flowers deep pass when like he had a bunch of time and kind of scrambled around and chucked yeah. it back there. And then after that, I think they were, they saw some maybe success in the passing game and they were like, oh, we're good to go. But we talked about it and I mentioned it as part of the reasons I took the Chiefs before the game was because I think the Chiefs cornerbacks were a lot more better, a lot better. Than the Ravens receivers, at least matchup wise. Yeah, matchup yeah. wise. So the the Ravens had to rely on their running game, and they didn't rely on their running game, and that's why they lost the football game. They relied mm-hmm. on the receivers. Zay Flowers, huge game, five receptions for one fifteen, but he kind of cost them because he had a taunting penalty that shot them in the foot from being close to the end zone, yeah. and then of course the very costly fumble at the mm-hmm. goal line. And I think it's because they rely on their receivers so much. I think if you kind of just run the ball a little bit more you have some more success yeah and that's the thing it's like there's one handoff to gus edwards in the second half he got like eight yards off yeah gus too. edwards averaged 6.7 yards per carry yeah he, he, was, he was getting yards, yards on his carries which it doesn't make makes sense. no sense why didn't you keep like focusing on the run or at least balance your offense a little bit more yeah yeah i think it was definitely a questionable play calling like i said i think the chiefs just being the chiefs i think it scared him a little bit but that doesn't excuse um not making good calls. Um, how much of the blame do you think this falls on Lamar? Like you look at the game. What, what do you think I, of Lamar's performance? Well, cause here's my thing. It's like, he just had an MVP year. Like we know how good he can be. This looked like somebody told him not to run. Yeah. Like, because yeah. you know, we've seen him go off script plenty of times this year, you know, rush for however many yards. Cause like, that's his game. Like that's what makes him such a great football player. But that, that legitimately looked like somebody told him, like you can't run the yeah, ball. And a key note is Willie Gay wasn't playing this game. The linebacker Which was huge. Yeah. yeah. Because it was going to be like, oh, like they they lost somebody that was going to be able to spy you and keep up. And he would just be like, you know, a wide open, clean pocket. And everyone's like, oh, well, that, that should mean that he should be able to throw the ball. It's like, okay, well, they're only rushing four. They have everybody else in coverage. There's nobody within 10 yards. You can get 15 yards off of that. If Lamar Jackson just takes off the way he can, 
he could easily get a first down every time. And then if you just keep doing that and they can't stop it, why would you what, just keep doing yeah, exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. Like, keep doing it until they can stop you. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, like, it, to me, it really looked like somebody told Lamar not to do that versus him choosing not to run kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just think whoever the OC is, like, I don't know what was going through his head. I feel like he was trying to, like, overcomplicate things against the Chiefs. He was probably trying to, like, outthink uh, Spags. Is that the – Spagnola, yeah. yeah. Spagnola. I think he was trying to do too much to, like, outplay Spagnola the whole time. And mm-hmm. you really didn't need to. If you just stuck to what's been working all season – I think yeah. he would have been fine. And they didn't really give the running game time no, to see if no. it was working. That it wasn't like games don't work like that. It wasn't like they established it in the first half. Yeah. And then they it wasn't like they did it in the first half. It wasn't working. And then they changed their plan. Yeah. They never really worked it into the offense. So it wasn't like we won't get to know if it was working or not. You see yeah. sometimes games where teams rush in the first half, go away from it in the second half when they're losing, and you kind of say, Hey, that was working in the first half. Why didn't you do it in the second? This yeah. was a game where we never knew if it was going to work because they never did it. Yeah, it was just such a small sample size. Like I said, they, they rushed for a total of 81 yards. 21 of those yards on a fourth and two QB draw. By, from, Lamar, from Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Oh, gee, you wonder why that was what worked out well. Yeah. And I mean, something that, and of course, you know, I don't want to take all of the blame from Lamar in this case because he had some dumb decisions like that there, there was like that last um interception i wish threw. i had the confidence of isaiah likely to put my hand up saying i'm open with <laughs> Dude. three dudes around me yeah he threw his hand up and there was two dudes like bracketing him and then there was a safety coming over like that was an awful yeah. awful decision like i understand some people are whining that it should have been pass interference which time out let me just talk about something real quick go ahead we this whole year have been saying how awful the refs have been we have been saying they're terrible. The like they're throwing too many flags. So like the defense can't do anything. It feels like they can't do anything. And then now in the playoffs, where it is a clear underthrown pass that that guy had no shot at getting, we want them to throw a ticky tack flag. And I was like, I'm glad you said this because if you're a quarterback throwing in a triple coverage, there should almost be no world in which the refs are bailing you out, no matter the context. You don't Isaiah deserve likely, that. Yeah. Isaiah likely isn't catching that ball, whether it's. If it's perfectly threaded in there, he's not catching the ball because he's so covered. Yeah. Like, there's no, you you can't throw the ball unless it's like over top of his own head. Yeah. And it, I just don't think and that arm angle works. Throw, yeah. yeah. So the idea that you would call a pass interference because the quarterback threw it in a triple coverage on there, like, I understand that it might be like, well, he had no shot for a jump ball or anything like that. But it's like, you can't bail out quarter. Like, the game is very quarterback friendly now. We're not bailing out Lamar Jackson because he's made a horrible decision. Yeah. To throw the ball. Yeah, it was just it, it, and it was just horrible. It really was because, like, at at a certain point, like you you can't reward bad throws for you can't reward bad throws with penalties. Yeah, like, because there was another thing where it was like, oh, well, I think it might have been likely again. Kind of got like held a little bit, like the whatever. James Bradbury in the Super Bowl. It thing, was yeah. like kind of like you know it was held, whatever got turned. But then Lamar Jackson throws it forty five yards out, like out of bounds. Yeah. It's like. He's not getting there. Yeah. Like, I don't know, like, why we thought, like, if Lamar was throwing the ball away, fine. But if you thought that he was going to be able to catch that pass, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, in terms of what I think, um, I know some people are going to label me as racist, as I've been labeled before. <laughs> um, and you can do what you want. Um, I give Lamar a lot of the blame for this game. Um, he got a big contract in the offseason. Um, no matter what his OC said and what the game plan was, as the quarterback, I would hope you have the trust to make those decisions to run out of the pocket. Like if your coach is like, don't run out the pocket, you need to throw the ball and you have a clear lane. Like it's still on you to scramble. And in terms of those turnovers, the one interception we had just discussed was absolutely brutal. There was no reason for him to throw the ball. Um, he would have been better off taking a sack. I think it was like in field goal range. They could have gotten three out of that. And in a seven point game, that matters a lot. And the fumble just, he was outside the pocket didn't have a good awareness of where he was and someone slapped down on his uh, hand, just knocked the ball right out. That's just bad quarterback play. And I think when we evaluate Lamar Jackson, Lamar now has, he's going to win the MVP award. He now has a unanimous MVP and this is going to be a near unanimous MVP this year. So he has two MVPs, both nearly unanimous, which is the same number Patrick Mahomes has. So we have to start putting him in that conversation with Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes played the way that Lamar Jackson did on Sunday we would be grilling him, yeah. saying that he was distracted. He's concerned, like the team is concerned about other things or whatnot. So, mm-hmm. 
to be fair and clear with all other teams, Lamar Jackson deserves a lot of the blame. We gave um, Josh Allen blame for things that happened this year with his turnovers and whatever, because he's like viewed as the guy on that team. So that like, I think this idea that we're putting it on the OC only and whatnot is just not like Lamar Jackson's a quarterback for that football team. And yet turned the ball over two times in a game where Patrick Mahomes didn't put that ball in harm's way at all. The entire game mm-hmm. didn't give the Ravens opportunities. The Ravens were the best defense at turning teams over. Mm-hmm. Chiefs didn't put it in harm's way. Lamar Jackson put that ball into the defense's hands twice. Yeah. And that changed the game. Obviously, Zay Flowers um, has that big fumble, but that's yeah, the game right there. That's three Ravens that. turnovers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Can't win a game with three turnovers. Like you're, Truthfully, the fact that it was 17-10 is good for you. That means you could have won in spite of your turnovers. Yeah, and you know what? And the thing is also that I have been seeing is like how everyone's like, oh, well, the re- it was Ravens versus refs the whole game. You did not watch that game if you legitimately think that. The Chiefs got hosed, in my opinion, on two holding they calls. They literally lost four points. Yeah, yeah. Because of the refs, <laughs> like they had two back-to-back light holding calls that backed them up to fourth and twenty-four. And these are holding calls that like are pretty ticky-tack. They're that not... happen almost nearly every play. Yeah, one of them was on like a screen well, where so... he threw the guy towards Patrick Mahomes. So it was. The first one was when Patrick Mahomes scrambled for the first down. They get him on a hole that looks really light. Then the very next play, they do a same screen guy. that goes into the touchdown, yeah. into the yeah. end zone. Yeah. They call it on the same guy, the very next play, yeah. as if they were almost like stalking him to see if he was going to do it again. Yeah. And and whatnot. So I don't know if like uh, um, McDonald, the defensive coordinator for the uh, Ravens or Harbaugh, had like said, hey, watch this guy. He keeps yeah. holding, and maybe that's why they got him. But. Yeah, the Chiefs got hosed of four points, as far as I'm concerned. They literally got hosed out of four points. And also, to everybody saying, well, well, why did Zay Flowers get a taunting penalty when Travis Kelsey's taunting every play? Okay, timeout. Let me, let's explain this real quick, because clearly people don't watch football or understand what's going on. So, even before the game starts... We got this whole thing about how, oh, Travis Kelsey threw Justin Tucker's helmet when he was warming up. He's such a bully. He's a terrible human (laughs) being. Justin Tucker was doing that to be a dick. That's the point. He said that. He's in the other team's warm-up area and is kicking balls and has his helmet right next to where Patrick Mahomes is throwing. Yeah, and what they said on New Heights podcast, and you can go listen for the full story there, is that like everybody does this, but his helmet and... Footballs were obnoxiously right where Patrick Mahomes was trying to throw the ball. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, he moved his crap because Justin Tucker's being a dick. He knows he's being a dick. That's the point. He's being a pest. He's trying to get in their head. This is just gamesmanship. Yep. So by Kelsey just moving his crap out of the way so Mahomes can throw, not that big of a deal, guys. It's not that deep. And then he ran off to Roquan and said, that's him. That's the one who bullied <laughs> that's me. That's the yeah. one who bullied me. And then meanwhile, there's a guy from Baltimore literally punched a Chiefs player before <laughs> yeah. the game. And we're not talking about that like that dude could have gotten ejected before the game started yeah i don't i don't know where all like the anti chief stuff came from i know what like, their dynasty and everything because again they the taunting call i've never seen a more obvious taunting penalty on a player like zay flowers had and people were like thinking that taunting should be taken out of the like the game that it was a great like, call time out, time zay, out. zay flowers caught the ball pushed the guy down on the ground because threw the ball at him yeah flexed on him yeah. and screamed. It's the most obvious call. Because I will give it, Sneed was still holding onto his leg. A little bit. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Like, if you want to just, like, kind of, like, there's, you know, you're kind of heat of the moment, whatever. It, w- it wasn't the push. that It wasn't the push. The it was not. The, they didn't throw the flag when he pushed him. Nope. It was spinning the ball in, like, at him and then flexing, flexing. over him. <laughs> like, dude, what are you thinking? It's... If, when they're training new referees, it's the exact clip they're going to show them for what a taunting, a uh, obvious taunting penalty looks like. So the only argument you can make in that case is that taunting shouldn't be a penalty in the NFL, which is just not good for the sport. I don't think it's good for young fans watching the sport to see uh, like like people like standing over top of them. That's how like little kids start doing that at games. And because the opinion. whole thing, and because it's like, oh well, they were pointing first down. It's like, yeah, because they're. They're not doing it at a player or one of my favorite clips that everybody loves using. And it's like, well, Travis Kelsey's in their face and he's pointing forward. How is that not taunting? It's like the other guys were talking first. Yes. That's the point that the refs know that. So they let that go. It's the same thing where when 
Patrick Queen throws Patrick Mahomes down, sort of at the whistle after a play. Travis Kelsey kind of gets in his face. Roquan Smith comes over. They're like kind of beefing, they're chirping, they're shoving each other, whatever. The refs are letting it go. It's playoff football. Yep. You know, it's it's playoff football in Baltimore with the two best teams in the AFC. Like nobody was no one like pushed each other. No one it was like helmets up against each other. You know, it was other. like clearly they were drawn at each other, they were getting in each other's face. That's fine. And then Kyle Van Noy from the top <laughs> rope comes in and headbutts Travis yep. Kelsey. And they're and like, they throw the flag. And they throw the flag. And then everyone's like, why? Well, why didn't Kelsey get a flag? It's like, he didn't headbutt somebody. What do you want him to do? God. And then it's so obvious. And then the next penalty in that drive oh where the field goal is Mahomes running up through the po- oh pocket, which we could have hit the parlay on that too. But, and then. The defensive tackle punches him <laughs> up in the head. And, and obviously, he was not trying to no, hit Mahomes he in the helmet, to. but he did, and it's a penalty. Yeah, yeah. He was not He was not past the line of scrimmage. He was still the quarterback in that part. part. Like, you, like I, and we are the same guys. You can look at this podcast where it's like, we we always criticize whenever refs, you know, okay, they, they criticize, uh, we criticize the refs whenever, let's say you have a guy like, okay, yep. he kind of like taps someone on the head and they throw the flag. It's like, that's light. That's not roughing the passer, whatever. This dude threw a haymaker <laughs> that hit the host like under the jaw and threw him back. Was there was there, and, was there a bit of a dive from Mahomes? Sure, but you can't do that. Both of you guys <laughs> picked the Ravens to win the game. I wanted them the to win. win. I wanted and Raj win. sat here on the podcast and got he got called gay <laughs> for not wanting the Chiefs to be in the Super Bowl. So if we are people that are saying that this the calls were fair calls because they were like and the, the Ravens the, lost their, that game on their own. Yeah. It's not because of the refs. The Ravens it drives me insane. <laughs> the Ravens had the win in their hand for they had. Every opportunity to win that game, they threw it away. They threw it away. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Oh my god! But what does this mean for the like? What does this Chiefs victory mean? We talked a lot about the Ravens, but what does what does this mean for the Chiefs? (sighs) They decided to play really well in the playoffs. Yeah, they they turned it on. I mean, they embraced the villain role. Um, a hundred percent. That's like they embraced the villains, and I'll I'll get into it a little bit later. But like that's, I think they. They now are about to be a dynasty if they win this. Like yeah. if they if they win this Super Bowl, which they easily can. Yeah, I think that well because it'll cement them as probably the best. What it's like three or four year run like ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it'll, beat be, out, it'll be top five. Well, no, it'll beat out the um the twenty fourteen to twenty eighteen Patriots where they had uh, three Super Bowl appearances or no they had four Super Bowl appearances, three Super Bowl rings. The Chiefs would have more wins than them yeah. in that same stretch and have the same amount of Super Bowls, mm-hmm. which would be like utterly ridiculous. Mahomes would catapult probably into a top ten quarterback of all time. I understand you're going to say it's glazing, but if you oh, if I was, you, Patrick Mahomes would be top five all time if he wins. I'll Super give Bowl. him top ten. I'll give him top ten um, because I just don't want it. The yeah, yeah, fair whatever. enough. <laughs> but but legitimately, like you look at like his or at least easily potential on track to be the greatest quarterback of all time. I understand that's in, an insane thing to say, but it's, if, it's really not when you look at it. If you look at it, like the the stretch that he's on, like the pace that he's on is like ridiculous. And of course people will say, oh, well, Brady was 22 and had however many things, whatever. It's like, okay, but then they also had a 10 year gap. Well, where they didn't so win a Super we'll play, this, we'll play this little math game, right? Mahomes has been in the league for six years and let's say yeah. he wins this year, which is a big if. He'll have three Super Bowl rings. If he plays to be 40 years old, that'll be exactly 12 more years, which means if he just duplicated his career times three, which would be hard to do, yeah. he would have nine Super Bowl rings. So yeah. obviously, I don't think he's going to end up with nine. But if we want to comp- be a- compare him to the GOAT quarterback, he needs five to be probably in the conversation, yeah. which he would be well on pace for. And then seven. if he gets to seven, I think it's almost undeniable yeah. th- based on how much more talented he is than tom yeah. brady and of course this is all hypotheticals these are yep. all what yeah. ifs these are all like extrapolations of what his career could look like but the whole thing is like we are witnessing like in real time at least for us we're watching the difference between like the michael jordan and lebron debate except they actually played against each other yep. we literally yep. saw the the passing of the torch between the two. Well, first it was Brady beating Mahomes over the head with it in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And then he passed <laughs> yeah. the torch to him. But um, but we're watching this next generation where it's like he is like the next guy. Like he has the potential to mm-hmm. be not only the face of the league, but one of, if not the greatest football player of all time. Yep. 
It's insane. It's, it's interesting. We're watching the best player in his sport yeah. in real time, and it's not even close. No. Um, I think for the Chiefs, this victory is just everybody. Did, like, I'm going to gloat a little bit because I <laughs> predicted the Chiefs to make the Super Bowl, but this is why people like me were getting upset when like all these other teams are favored because the Chiefs are a championship caliber team with the best quarterback who were constantly said the receivers aren't good enough. They're going to have to play on the road in Buffalo, play on the road in Baltimore. Um, and all like gave all these reasons for why the Chiefs wouldn't win. And the reason the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl again is because they have championship caliber quarterback with a championship caliber pass catcher with a championship caliber coach with a, a championship def- a caliber defense with a caliber defense and a defensive coordinator for the last six years who has always showed up and coached his team in big spots. Yeah, um, Spags is he's wildly underrated yes, when it well, comes to because he hasn't had the best talent. Yeah. And then this year he has great talent and they just have dominated defensively when they needed to. And this means that nobody should go into a game again with the idea that the Chiefs, especially when these big lines, that the Chiefs should be underdogs, that they are not right. Like no matter what, if they start off the year four and four, three and five next year, they should be given the benefit of the doubt from here on out until they're just no longer winning because they have showcased for the last six years that it's not like Patrick Mahomes now is 10 and three straight up as an underdog. That's ridiculous. That's insane. He's yeah, like 11, one and one against the spread as an underdog. Like it's these constant things that are happening that it's, it's not a hot take. If you said the Ravens were going to win the game, but the line moved up to four and a half to five. People were saying the Ravens were going to blow out the chiefs because look at the stats. They were so much better during the regular season and the best player in the sport just went in there and kicked their ass yeah. again. And it yeah. happened in the Josh Allen game in, in Baltimore. Uh, in the well, Buffalo. I wouldn't say it's as much of a Mahomes ass kicking as it is. As it, it's, I feel like it's a combo. Like Mahomes did play very good. He played a clean football game. That's, I think, the, kind of the big But thing. that's, I mean, that matters. I so, wouldn't say whoop their ass. I would I, say the Ravens I, shot themselves in the foot 80 different times. I mean, I just, fair. I look, that's fair. I just looked at the second half where, sure, they didn't put up points, but. Mahomes didn't turn the ball over. Yeah, he constantly threw the game. ball away. Didn't give him opportunities. He only threw and completed nine passes in the entire he game. Can, he can win in any way that you need him. Yep. Yeah, and he's just like in these playoff games, he's thrown like nine interceptions in his seventeen career playoff games, which is absurd against the best defenses. Throwing for thousands and thousands of yards, and when in a game where Lamar turns over the ball twice and Josh Allen turned the ball over in the last game. He's constantly giving his team the turnover margin in yeah. these games, and that leads to a lot of victory. So I give Mahomes a ton of credit. Yeah, um, and especially this year too. Like they kind of went through a bit of a gauntlet to get where they are. Like <clears throat> obviously, regular season they skidded, they skidded, they skidded. They they weren't the best, whatever. Then when it comes time to playoffs, they have first a negative twenty three degree game, fourth where, coldest game in NFL history, where they look no different than any time. In fact, they look better than they did before. Yep. Then they went into Buffalo and beat the next guy in they, Josh Allen. They were underdogs by two and a half points. By two and a half points. They went into Buffalo and there was all of that talk about how Mahomes has never been in Buffalo. Mahomes can't win on the never road. Played a road never, game. never played a road playoff game. He doesn't know what it's like to be in a Buffalo and he beat them in Buffalo. I get it. Oh, they shanked a field goal, whatever. And we, we talked about them. Whole, we talked about that. We talked about that ad, ad nauseum. Like two, two weeks ago. Yeah. The, the game was not as close as it appeared to be, but go ahead. Then then it's, oh, well, they have to go to the best team in the league right now, Baltimore. That I was talking about how, how insane the Baltimore fan base is and how big of a home field advantage it is to play in Baltimore. Underdogs by four and a half points. Underdogs by four and a half points. And Mahomes went in there and played a perfect game. And that's where, like, and that's where, like, I was saying when I was advocating for the Chiefs getting in this position, it was just because I, I just turned my mic off. Um, <laughs> I was advocating for the Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl because I just thought Mahomes would play the cleanest football, that he would lead his team, and they would, they would be right in the playoffs, and that we were silly for doubting a Mahomes and pa- a Travis Kelsey led offense with Andy Reid. And I'm still sitting here saying that. Um, it's just an incredibly impressive performance. I would say if the Chiefs can finish the job here, it's the most impressive playoff run that a team has had in a while yeah um they were underdogs on the road twice played the fourth coldest game in nfl history against the best receiver in the league um in a really creative offense and they, they don't have all their pieces right and so yeah i think it's extremely impressive um 
for the Ravens. We'll have to see what they do in the offseason. They just lost their head, their defensive coordinator today. He went to go head coach for the Seattle Seahawks. So we'll see where they go. But anyone else have any thoughts on the Chiefs Ravens before we move on? That's like 25 minutes on the Chiefs. Nah, I think I've placed <sighs> we, enough. Yeah, we, yeah, I dick rode Mahomes enough. I think we're good. Yeah. Um, next game. 49ers defeat the Lions 34 to 31. Lions were up by 17 at halftime. Uh, Brock Purdy and the 49ers come all the way back to win the game by three. Brock Purdy, 20 of 31, 267, a touchdown and an interception. Goff, 25 for 41, 273, a touchdown. It was full of Dan Campbell question, questionable coaching decisions. Maybe Brock Purdy MVP moment. Oh, no, God. What no. is our take on this game? Because there was a lot. Dan but, Campbell would hit on 20. <laughs> he if he was in blackjack and he had 20 he would hit hit me <laughs> he yeah. would hit on 21 yeah dan gamble i mean look everybody wow is, dan gamble's a great name dan i love gamble? that dan yeah. gamble. No, it's i did not want to make the i did not i stole that from the internet i did not make that. but it's funny it's really funny but um yeah that i mean that first half they did exactly what we all thought that what i thought they were going to do how the lions were going to win this game because it was going to be, it's going to be the run game is how they're going to dominate. And that is exactly what they were doing because the 49ers had issues with explosive run plays and with David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, they were doing exactly that. And apparently Jameson Williams, who out of nowhere decided yeah. to be a crazy running back, but all right, whatever. Um, they dominated. They really did. The 49ers offense didn't really look like it was in sync. Um, the, the Detroit defense was playing out of their mind. Yep, they let up, that only let up seven points in the first half. They were pl they were playing absolutely out of their minds. They they had every ounce of momentum going in, and then just the calls by Dan Campbell. I think and CJ Gardner Johnson waving at those fans. Things got tight, and that's it, what happened. Like when they, when they hit adversity, third quarter they. Fell apart. Yep. Mm -hmm. That third quarter scoring was the 49ers scored 17 points. The Lions had zero. They let, because I think they were like, okay, we're going to play conservative. We have a lead. We don't want to like do anything stupid. We don't want to let them back into this too fast. And they took their foot off the gas way too much. Yeah. Way, way too much. They were playing way too conservative. They were, they were just letting the 49ers gash them throughout the entire game. And it was, oh God. I mean, we'll get into the Dan Gamble yeah. calls at some point, but good Lord. I understand the first fourth down call. The first one that he calls, it's you're trying to go up. I think it was that was in the first half, I believe, mm -hmm. actually, where they were trying to go up and it, it, just extend their lead. Sure. I'm, I'm all for that. They were within their own. Yeah, like, it, was, it was a question between if we were going to go for a three score game, like you kick the field goal, you're up by three yeah. scores. Or when you're already up big at that point, I'm so, pulling up the game cast to make sure yeah, that's yeah. accurate. But it it was the right call. It worked. Like if Josh Reynolds could catch a pass, yeah. they would be totally, totally fine. Because it was the right play call. He was open and he just couldn't hang on to it. Yep. Whatever. So it's yeah. with seven minutes left in the third quarter. Oh, third um, quarter. Okay, third yeah, quarter. Yeah. This is to go up whatever they were going to go up by. Um, because of Got, okay, 49ers get a field goal. Yeah. And they could kick a field goal to keep it at a three score game. Yep. Fourth and two at their at at San Francisco's twenty eight. So yeah. it would have been a chip shot field goal probably. And they have a a pass that's open to Reynolds. Um I think I would have kicked the field goal in that spot. But again, I think we can all understand that's the logic. that's a worthy gamble right there. And fourth and two, statistically you're likely to hit it. You're likely to hit it and they, and it, the, and they did. Yeah. They just they just didn't convert. Like that's Understandable, whatever. The next one, <laughs> now, that fourth down call. What on God's green earth are we doing? Dan like, yeah, so are down by three. So and you go for it. Yeah. So the game cast here is it is fourth and three on San Francisco's thirty. So they're in field goal range. They are down by three, and they go for it with seven minutes left in the fourth. That there feels like a spot where you just tie up the game. You just yeah. tie the game. Like if you don't trust your defense that much, we got bigger problems there, Dan. Because was it what was it fourth and fourth and three on that one? Yeah. Fourth and three. Yeah. Okay, because it wasn't it to like a Monroe St. Brown. Yep. I think yeah, because it was like it was again, it was like or something. That yeah, it was like far. the pass was like kind of there, kind of not. 
like it, it just looked like the play kind of got blown up a little bit. Kick the field goal and tie it up. You do not want to try to rely on onside kicks to win the game. Because if you don't get this, you're screwed. Well, so then even we can even talk about this more in his decisions. Um, he runs the ball on like a third down or whatever that ends up burning a lot of clock. Yeah. At yeah, one yeah. point, uh, I forget what point of the game it was, but there was no reason to run the ball. He should have called a timeout. Um, that was right. They, at the, that was right at the end when they were trying to score the yep, touchdown. They, they go the ball. Yeah. and they and this is another thing. They go for the touchdown mm-hmm. when really they oh, what they could have done is they went for the touchdown and they went on a fourth and goal. They should have kicked the field goal, not run the ball on the third down. Yes. Because then they could have kicked the ball to 49ers three and out with timeouts and gotten the ball back yes. to go score. Instead, they're relying on an onside kick, which is just highly improbable which in the NFL at this point. Which almost worked, which is it, insane. Yeah. Like it was very, very, very close to working. He was about like a half to a yard and a half, like too close. Mm-hmm. But it was almost there. Yeah. Which is wild to say. But yeah, it's just like after the whole year like that the, the Lions have had that Michigan as a whole has had where it's like, oh, they won the Aside from the Pistons. Uh, well, the, well the, the Pistons are irrelevant. Yeah. Well, the, that's actually one of the big problems. The Pistons won that day. They did. The Pistons, along with CJ Gardner Johnson. What are we doing? <laughs> Why are you winning Pistons, today? You, no You're one was, six and forty. No one was watching your game. You should have just lost. Like because st- uh, for anybody that doesn't know, there's a curse that only one Michigan slash Detroit team can win at a time at in one day at a time. So the, when the Pistons won. The sports gods were like, "Oh, the Pistons won." I guess. Oh, uh, okay, whatever. And then they look over and they see, "Hey, CJ Gardner Johnson's waving at fans at halftime." Yeah, no, nah, Detroit's not winning this game. We're gonna smite them real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was saying to all of our guys after the game, Dan Campbell made fireable. Coaching he should not get fired. He should not get fired at but, all. But those are things that if you are Nick Sirianni, yes. you are a coach that has been in the system longer and haven't brought the Lions back from how much hell they had been in, yeah. then you get fired because those were some bad decisions. Yeah. And there were also things that went wrong, right? Jameer Gibbs fumbled when the like at a really crucial spot where the momentum was switching. There was the stupid bounced interception yep, yeah, die the and whatever. Yeah. And everything like they definitely like there were some things that happened there. But your coaching decisions, if you just kick two field goals, you win the game. And I know that's like playing revisionist history, but if you just kick two field goals on those fourth downs instead, you win the game. You win the game. Um, and then even at the end, using bad management of the clock is just is just very like suspect. So again, Dan Campbell, like not getting fired, but he should let's be very clear. Dan Campbell should not get fired because you're right. After he has brought the the Lions back from being god awful to the nfc championship game yeah like this this year for the lions as much as it sucks that you lost in the nfc championship game it was absolutely incredible you have a ton of young guys on the roster you have a lot they have like 60 million dollars in cap space next year yep like you can build this team yeah they have a lot of talent they have a lot of talent you got to work on the. you got to get another receiver and you got to work on the defense that's really about it yeah, yeah. and you with 60 million dollars in cap space and pretty much all your draft picks you can do that yeah like they easily can they have a bright future ahead of them but and they're getting their oc back get they're mm-hmm. keeping their oc which is huge huge for this team but good lord dan campbell i you what i i respect his commitment to the bit because he lived by the gamble and he died by that i gamble. do at least appreciate that he yeah. didn't like you'll see coaches kind of go away from what works in the playoffs yeah. sometimes yeah. i appreciate that he he stuck with it. He, he stuck, stuck to his with guns. his mindset. But I mean, we also had been saying all year, like all the decisions Dan Campbell made all year were just wildly aggressive. And <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, I could, if I was the GM, I, I would consider putting a kind of an assistant head coach in there to help with some maybe more game, yeah. game management. <laughs> it's decisions. like a get back coach, but instead it's yeah. for like decisions. It's like, okay, Dan, they, calm down. <laughs> yeah, they do assistant head coaches all the time. They just yeah. hired one down in, uh, in Carolina for uh, Dave Canales um, for his role. But yeah, I just think they need someone to manage that a little bit better. But enough about the, 40, the Lions because they lost the game. The 49ers, did Brock Purdy answer the call? Did he show you enough? He that, did. He, he He's he, not a system quarterback. He actually scrambled. I was very shocked that he could run. 
The scrambles were highly impressive. Those were, yeah, those were really. I good. was not expecting to see Brock Purdy scramble for over thirty yards. Yeah, and on I was that was that shocked me. They they literally had like almost the exact same like scramble drill that him and Lamar did, where they, they like flip the defender like over their back yep. and roll out the other way. Carson Wentz also had something very similar yeah. in Washington mm-hmm. a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Probably but, more than a couple now, but I was about to say yeah. like, that's definitely more than a couple. Doc, definitely twenty. <laughs> I'm, re- I'm reliving <laughs> my glory days now. Let me, <laughs> look, let me it was right, it was really close, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, the whole shtick with Kyle Shanahan's teams is that he's up big and they can't come back they've done that twice yep. in the playoffs this year so uh, I, they look good they looked really good in the second half they looked awful in the first half but they came out they made their adjustments that came out swinging and really it was kind of the offense that like really brought it together mm-hmm. and once that defense got a stop they were really like t- they really like they were able to pin their better. ears back. They were able to get after the quarterback a lot more. They were able to adjust to the run game better. It just like everything shifted, and I mean you know it's death taxes and white Jesus Christian McCaffrey yep. being an absolute monster as per usual. But Carolina, why did you <laughs> why did you do that trade? Like what went through your mind? I don't I don't even know what they got in return for it. I think but... it's a second round pick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I why? Think dra- I think they drafted Jonathan Mingo with that one. There had to be some collusion <laughs> going on there, like how? Why? Yeah. I but mean, Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy He stepped up to the call. He so he's not gonna be one of those quarterbacks I think that's gonna be making the most spectacular throws, whatever, that kind of thing, but he'll win games. I think Brock Purdy, I wouldn't have called him a game manager. I don't think so. No. But he's definitely dropped the label of game manager because he made a lot of plays out of the pocket. He had that incredible escape and then throw to Kyle Juszczyk. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah which yeah. is also just a fantastic catch. But that was yeah. really good. Um, his scrambling was fantastic and he didn't yep. look scared. I will say he got a little lucky because he threw an interception. He that did. bounced off the DB's face. Yes, and then Ayuk caught it for a touchdown. That was extremely well, lucky. Well, he caught it like the one in this quarter. Yeah. Oh, okay. After, but like, yeah. whatever. And so. For Brock Purdy, do I th- still think he's a top 10 quarterback? Probably not. I still think he sits at 12, but he's shown me enough to say, hey, the 49ers have the right QB to yeah. win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Now, he doesn't give you as good of a chance as a guy like Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, those guys, but you don't need those guys every win- year to win a Super Bowl. And Brock Purdy can get this team to a Super Bowl, yeah. and by keeping him on a cheaper deal for n- another couple years, you're able to keep the talent around him. So it'll be very interesting when his contract comes up. Because yep. where is, is where is his evaluation? Is he better than Daniel Jones's contract? Like I think Daniel Jones overpaid. So like you give Brock Purdy thirty million dollars, but does another team try to give you more? Like that will become interesting. But Brock Purdy clearly is good enough to win this team a Super Bowl in the right conditions. Yep. Like I said though, I don't think like he had a bad first half, got lucky with the IU touchdown, but made some good plays out of the pocket. So I would say he answered the call, but I'm still not sold and think he's one of the better QBs in the league by any yeah, means. Yeah. But he is definitely top half. Yep. Um is that any more thoughts on the 49ers Lions game? No. Nope. Nope. Two great football games. Awesome. Yeah. Actually great. some great games. Um, they were really yeah. fun to watch. Yep. Um had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. We're gonna hold off on Super Bowl predictions for now. We'll save those we're, for next week. Save those for next week. Give us some more time to think about it. Um I do have a feeling we're all of us are leaning towards, but we'll save that for the pod yeah. there. I'll need but, to see what the injuries and stuff are looking like. Yeah, there are some key ones that I yep, want to keep I need to pick on. with the motion, particularly <laughs> Joe Tooney, uh, Willie Gay. Uh, Joe Tooney, I believe, will be out. Oh, really? Joe Tooney, I believe, will be and out. And they lost their defensive end. And, of course, on cue, our mics died. Of course, but, but it was pretty back. good cut. Yeah. Um, we're decent in the middle part, so we'll see if you're even hearing this. Maybe I'll just cut it and make it clean. But, yeah. Um, like I said, we're going to hold off on our Super Bowl predictions, um, but we did want to talk about Taylor Swift. Oh, God. Everyone's favorite topic. I know, um, right? It's our mandatory every like three week yeah. topic. We really haven't talked about her much on the podcast yeah. because there wasn't much to say, but I think now that the Super Bowl set, Taylor yeah. will likely be at the Super Bowl. She was on the field during the celebration. Yeah. We can kind of offer our collective takes on it because yeah. I feel like a lot of people agree, but there still is definitely like a negative sentiment. Yeah. Um, and I think, especially because we're some, like college age people, we have a lot of like friends and people enjoy Taylor Swift. Yes. And I think we have a little bit more of like a better insight to the I whole could, thing. Well, because I think I, I, not trying to toot my own horn, but I think I got a bit of a nuanced take with it because look, at the end of the day, big picture, 
the NFL is a business, all right? The end of the day, no matter what, the NFL is a business. They care about the bottom dollar, right? And something that is always good for that league is to have a villain because it makes every other fan base feel like their team is the good guys and it makes them want to watch their team more. And you hate one team. They had it for 20 years with the Patriots, like 23 years, something like that. It was ridiculous. They had one team that everybody hated in the league collectively. We could all cheer and root against this one team and everybody in that fan base loved their team to death. And that fan base then gave so much more time and energy to that team. So then that made everybody feel like, well, we got to catch up because now it's an arms race. So now we have to then compensate for that. So the NFL loves villains because you need it. You need one of those. And the NFL's point of view, oh, well, how else can we piss people off? <laughs> oh, so you're telling me that people don't love seeing Taylor Swift all the time? Okay. Well, then we're just going to get a camera on her whenever we can. But here's the thing. She's not even um, on yeah. screen yeah. that much. So I'm going to, re- like, if I remember, I'll uh, link the New York yes. Times article. New York Times did a great piece on how much she's actually on camera. I believe it is an average of 32 to 42 sec- 32 to 4- 34 seconds. I can't remember which one. Not to mention she was on the Miami broadcast for a minute because the game was so bad because the, the Dolphins couldn't score and the broadcast was horrible because it was like, the least popular game so that's with the one minute outlier well the, for the past, well yeah so that's my whole thing is that i think that you know when we're looking at like villain teams right we always like it everything feels bigger than it actually is right like how we look at things like deflate game it really if you look at what happened wasn't that big of a deal It really wasn't that deep. Spygate, different story. That literally was them bugging a locker room. That was a whole other thing. But it makes it feel like there's a lot more going on. Like how we feel like, oh, maybe the refs are favoring the Chiefs because they capitalize on those penalties. They don't make a ton of mistakes. And whenever the other team makes a mistake, the Chiefs end up winning. So that's why it feels like there's a lot more like of like this. Um, it makes the Chiefs feel like this this villain, right? So that's why whenever you see Taylor Swift, it's oh well, they put her on all the time because they put her on after a touchdown, and half the time people are looking at their phones during the entire game. So that whenever they hear the announcer start screaming, they look up and see oh there's there's a touchdown. Oh there's Taylor Swift because Travis Kelsey scored. So it makes it really feel like she's on the screen a lot more when she. Is she over the past two games has been on the screen for less screen time than Jason Kelsey was without a shirt on? That's false. No, how close is it? Three seconds off. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but and that's what I was going to say is Travis Kelsey had five catches, seventy-five yards, two touchdowns against the Bills. She was on screen for twenty-four seconds. The girlfriend to like the second most popular player on the Chiefs. Yeah. Maybe honestly, he might be more popular than uh, Patrick. Yeah. And then Jason Kelsey, who was acting like an out of control (laughs) adult who was shirtless, had 21 seconds. But no one had a problem with Jason Kelsey, who was drunk and shirtless being on camera. But people had the, I can't watch Taylor Swift anymore because she's just screen. She's on just screen. on it too much. Like, and, what do you want her to and do? And we followed up her being on screen too much in the Bills game with 32 seconds of her being on in the Chiefs Ravens game. Also, and, I'm pretty sure one of the times she was it, on the screen was for like an ad for the Grammys. Yes, and yes, it was that because Stevie had the call. And not to mention, Travis Kelsey had one of the best games of his career with yeah. 11 catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown against the Ravens and ridiculous catches by the way yeah. again for the Dolphins game she was on for a minute and 16 seconds this is all on the New York Times or a call link below Chiefs Bengals she was on for 12 seconds <laughs> the Chiefs Raiders on Christmas Day 14 seconds so this this notion that she's on a lot I think someone ran like the the division I think it's 0.42 percent of the game yeah it's, is devoted yeah. to Taylor Swift coverage um Peter, do you have anything more you want? To- well, just really my my big thing is it's like for the people that are screaming at their TVs saying that she should get off the screen, whatever. 
I understand why you think she's on the screen more often than not, but what my message to you is it's not that deep. I promise you it's really not that deep. And if you've seriously got issues with a woman who is one of one of, if not the most popular person on the planet, she was Spotify's most streamed artist at this mm-hmm. point being on the screen for under a minute in all of these games because she is dating one of the most popular and famous people in the NFL who's on the best team in the league. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like it's, it's not that deep. Like just kind of get over yourself. Like, yep. especially to all these dads that are like trying to get online and say like, Oh, I hate Taylor Swift, like whatever, all this stuff. And it's like, you're screaming all of this probably in front of your daughter who probably likes Taylor Swift. And it's like, dude, like that's not a good message to be sending to your kids. Like, because you get all these other fathers that are like, you know, I love that Taylor is on the, like is being talked about more because it's bringing my wife and daughter into the football community because it's like, Oh, well I wasn't interested in football before, but now that Taylor is dating Travis, uh, Travis, I was about to say Travis Swift, <laughs> Travis <laughs> Kelsey at this point. Yeah. Uh, at this point but it's because the whole thing is like i mean she did put him on she did put him on the map so bringing those bringing more people into the league is into the watching into the audience it's good for everybody it brings a different demographic and it brings a new perspective like guys stop crying about it it's it's really not that deep and it's so annoying at this point yeah, like it. It's so annoying. So you were on like a point that I was thinking about is sports. This is like a more societal thing. Leisure in sports watching in this country has ke- keeps going down from the past. Um, NFL ratings have been relatively high, but on a week to week basis, especially like when you look at sports like the NFL, MLB, NHL, they face a problem with people are not watching sports as much because they're busy and we're more in a work focused society. Society. Streaming platforms are kind of taking over tel- television. Yep. Um, so you don't like the Peacock did their the game, the Chiefs and the uh, Dolphins. Dolphins, Dolphins game was a Peacock only game. Yeah. So it was less accessible, accessible for many people to watch. The way you can combat that is by having one of the world's most famous people helping to promote your sport. She generated about $340 million in brand for the NFL and the Chiefs this year. That is huge, and that helps keep the sport going along. So I'm not trying to sit here and say, oh, the only reason like this is good is because you're helping the sport grow and you're getting more viewership in. But if you actually care about football, if you're an old head who loves football but hates seeing Taylor Swift, she is helping you gain viewership and keeping the league afloat for years and years to years to come. Because the truth of the matter is sports watching has been declining, and you just got to – transparently, you just got a bunch of like – middle-aged women younger like, women to come it, in and watch football. yeah like like sort of like millennial to like like i guess gen z yeah like w- which has been the demographic the nfl could never reach ever never and and the whole thing is is like to just like even to backtrack a little yeah. bit what do you want taylor to do like she's not doing this for publicity or for the nfl like She's just dating Travis Kelsey because she likes Travis Kelsey as a person. Yeah. She's like, even gone out and said, like, I feel like the NFL is posting me too much. And she's you even can said see her on the Jumbotron yeah. when she's, like, like telling the camera to get off her. Because she's like, I'm just here to watch. Like, like, if you've ever played a sport and you had a significant other in the crowd or something, would you think that would you like if everybody started booing them the second they went on like a jumbotron or something or like they were pointed out in the crowd for some reason like no like Mm -hmm. this isn't uh, obviously as nfl fans that's where we're coming from where it is great for business but just as a person as a human being like what do you like why do you care yeah it's it's adding to the league not subtracting and when i think of things that this could be viewed as negative for. So when we think about, and this doesn't matter what political side you want, it's both. They're not promoting political views. They're not anti-vax. They're not commenting on the wars or out there. All they are is just a couple, a, a couple that is on camera. So when it's, it's kind of fine and quirky when Aaron Rodgers calls Travis Kelsey, Mr. Pfizer. That's and, f- it's, it's and, weird, but funny. Like whatever that's, it's viewed as funny by everybody. He's allowed to say that Jimmy Fallon's on the Epstein. Oh shit. That was he, crazy. Um, 
he's allowed to do ayahuasca and the darkness retreat and all that's kind of viewed as oh he's quirky and whatnot yeah um we don't really have an issue with that um but when taylor swift and travis kelsey just get in a relationship and she happens to be on camera a little bit it's a problem it's like we are we are almost put holding them to a higher standard for doing nothing wrong yeah they're not out there perpetrate like trading perpetuating is the word yeah like anything that's political or negative they, like for god's sake we have deshaun watson on the screen yeah. for 17 weeks yeah we, like, have, <laughs> we have someone who most definitely engaged in you have 70 cases yeah. against it that were all handled out of court okay bro you definitely didn't do anything constant players getting in trouble travis kelsey's never had a really big issue uh taylor swift has done nothing but be quiet and hold herself and her brand to a high level. I've never, no one's ever said a bad thing about Taylor Swift besides her carbon dioxide admissions on our flights. Yeah, but besides that and also uh, Kim Kardashian, which if you're taking Kim Kardashian's word at face value, I got we got some <laughs> way bigger yeah. issues here, bro. Um, So I just, this idea that yeah. these two people who really seem to like each other yeah. can't be like left alone and the NFL can put them on the screen. And it's like Simone Biles got a lot of attention for a little bit, a small period of time. Yeah. Um, and her husband, I think they're Jonathan Owens. Yeah. Is I, th- on the I think yeah. are they married? They're married. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's, gonna the remember, he's, he's a whole, you're going to remember yeah, the whole, whole thing page. there, but they've gotten like more time on the NFL's website and games and whatnot. And Jonathan Owens is nowhere close to as relevant as Travis Kelsey and Simone Biles isn't as popular as Taylor Swift. So they're, this is happening across the league with popular like yeah. wives or, or even now where it's like, oh, well, Taylor Swift was wearing something made by Kyle Juszczyk's wife. Now, it's it's just it's like like they, they're they've promoted Christian Juszczyk yeah. up because Taylor Swift is wearing a piece yeah. of her clothing. So it's good for a Christian. Yeah. Kristen, it's good for Taylor. Yeah, it's good for the Chiefs. The it's NFL good for the league. And it's, like, it's like, guys, if you look, if you just don't like women, you can say that. All right, I don't agree with it. Just say it. Stop beating around the bush. Just be like, misogynistic. Just be misogynistic. It's just say just it. a game. Like it's not <laughs> it's that a game, deep. bro. Like it's it's not that deep, and it's it it really is at this point because like at fr- look at first it was a little nuts where they had her in like the NBC intro during like the Sunday night football thing mm-hmm. where it's like I could see where you could be like all right this is getting a little bit much and then they dialed it back. They did. Like, did they? Because at first it broke the internet when she was first at the Chiefs game. It did. It completely broke it. And this is everything with social media. Like, things go in waves. Yeah. Next season, they're going to do the same thing if Taylor Swift's at games. They're going to show her celebrate a few times. That's going to be it. But it's not going to be as big of a deal. Like, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey dating rocked the world in the beginning with good reason. Because it's two of the most, like, famous people on the planet yes well i guess taylor swift on the planet travis kelsey in the united states yeah yes. but like the, the massive pe- like massive personalities yeah in a relationship that's gonna do anything whether you're just like artist related or whatever and now it's just not as big of a deal and she acts like every other nfl white like everyone talks about Brittany mahomes yeah um there's plenty of other Brittany's relations something else <laughs> well yeah but i'm saying like she still gets screen time like yeah Brittany mahomes is on the tv damn near as much as taylor swift yep. during those celebrations she's they in the were, box they were cutting to brock party's parents in the crowd yep. yeah no problem with that what's the difference yep it, 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 there's not and so i think as it's all said and done you'll see taylor swift to the super bowl in all likelihood i think everyone like is doing the math on how she can get to the super bowl yeah she can get there she will probably be there yeah um and Swifties are currently planting trees right now to make sure that they can offset her carbon emissions yeah. to make sure she gets back. And that's and that's just the thing. Like Taylor Swift, like she's done everything right as an artist and as a person yeah. in the spotlight. When there's a lot of scrutiny you can face. Yeah. Travis Kelsey has done nothing but be a good example for the league. Yeah. And they just don't deserve the hate that yeah. has come their way. Which, by the way. Is it, it probably seems like there's a lot more hate than there is because the people that do hate are just very loud. But still. and everyone's making anti hate video. I mean, we're not the, like the first like yeah. Of course. Colin Cowherd did. If you have not seen Colin Cowherd rant on like the Taylor Swift stuff, yeah. go listen to it. It's yeah. so funny and so accurate. Um, he pretty much just like says like lonely men need to like get a life. Yeah, pretty um, much. which is true. But uh, Raj, did you have any Taylor Swift takes? 
Oh, you guys said everything you needed to. Now I'm going to the comedy part of it. Oh, okay. Let's okay. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the memes I see. The memes been, are so funny. Like NFL music, El Crocoposa, Captain America, save yes. us. <laughs> like there is that aspect that is so funny. 100%. Like now, so they, have, funny. now they have a Brock Purdy like, <laughs> yes. edit of this too. Like I love the memes. I live for them. Dude. Oh my God. Or like the, there's some out of pocket ones. Like they like, I don't, I don't know if that was a real like Taylor Swift music video or something of her getting thrown under a car. No. So that was her in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Point. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like it was like Taylor Swift stepping foot in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, under a car. I love the memes. Like they're amazing. Yeah, because there there's a very obvious like you know people in the content creation world at least see that it's like oh there's some response here I'm gonna make a bunch of jokes about it and then it kind of like snowballs but like the people that like obviously are clearly just poking fun at this like that's hilarious. Yeah, it's yeah. so funny. And, right. and Travis thinks it's funny. Yeah. Like, Everyone thinks it's like the jokes to a certain extent are funny. Yeah. The the fact that she's on camera a lot is funny yeah. and everything like that. But there's just a point where it's it just overblown. gets cringe to and if you're so much. if you're so depressed and lonely that you're not happy that Travis Kelsey and uh Taylor look really happy celebrating yeah. the AFC championships together. I that's on you. Like if you're not happy that Travis is really pulling for Taylor to get all those Grammy awards that she's gonna get in a few days, like that's on you. Just be happy that two people are happy. Yeah, like especially it's, in a world where both of them are scrutinized daily yeah. for everything they do. Yeah. Ta- I mean, Taylor Swift's driving in motorcades and stuff because yeah. of like threats and, and whatnot. She had like and, a stalker show up at her house like thirty times or something like that. Yeah, but, like maybe be happy that she seems to be happy yeah. in a relationship. With like someone, just so. at the end of the day, it's a lot easier to be happy. Like for the memes, hate well, all you want. Yeah. Those are hilarious. Those are so <laughs> funny, but. If you're if you genuinely like have an issue with this, like just just be happy, man. Like just find something in it that you can enjoy and just move on. Like it's not that deep. As a group of people who watched the whole game together, both games this past weekend, the amount of time that we talked about Taylor Swift was, was probably next to none. M- like, maybe a minute total. It was like, yeah. oh look, Taylor, cool. <laughs> yeah, like anyway. Like when Travis scores, we're like, oh, what's Taylor gonna do? Yeah, and no. We're it, on the field, we're like, oh wow, look at that, it's so cute. Yeah, because we were like, because of course we were like placing bets on how fast yeah. they would show her. Yeah, yeah, like, and that's just I think people make it seem like sometimes that that's all Taylor Swift does is dominate the conversation. We did 25 minutes on the Chiefs game without talking about Taylor Swift because guess what? She wasn't a big deal in the game. Yeah. There's so, not that much going on. That's yeah. that. Any last thoughts? I wonder if she's going to get a ring if they win. <laughs> I think she deserves an OC ring, honestly. Also, it's going to be hilarious if they win when uh, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are macking on each other. And he's just <laughs> holding up the Lombardi trophy. It's going to piss so many people off. Yeah. It's going to be so funny. <laughs> um, we're going to do a head coaching roundup and go through those hirings, but um, we're going a little bit long, so we're going to save that for next week. We will also have our Super Bowl predictions, yes. our final predictions <laughs> yeah. next week, and we'll recap kind of uh, can they tie how we did in the uh, <laughs> can they both lose? <laughs> we'll kind of recap how we uh, did for the playoff predictions. Um, it's almost the end of the NFL season. That's crazy. Yeah, that's really crazy. I can't believe the Eagles did that. <laughs> it's our last NFL season in undergrad. Don't say that. I can't Ever believe again. the Eagles left let me down on this note. Oh boy, I can't believe it. Good lord you brian johnson (laughs) (laughs) we went so long um that's it for this episode if you made it this far we appreciate you listening help us on our road to 100 subscribers and other than that we'll see you next time with our super bowl 58 predictions brock purdy save us brian johnson you're a domestic terrorist (laughs)